Hello everyone and welcome to Python and MATLAB tutorial. In this tutorial I will explain you how to execute Python code directly from MATLAB. The main motivation for creating this video tutorial comes from the following problem that is often met in practice. Imagine that you wrote a piece of code in MATLAB. This code performs basic matrix operations and computes a single matrix as the result. Then you need to send this matrix to a Python code file that you developed previously. This Python code should receive this matrix, perform some additional operations on this matrix, or even it can call a machine learning library or machine learning functions, such as TensorFlow functions, and it needs to specify this matrix as an input to a TensorFlow function. Then, after Python code completes its operations, it should send back the result to MATLAB. In such cases, we need to develop an interface between MATLAB and Python. And I will teach you in this video how to develop this interface. I will use the following example in order to explain you how to develop an interface between MATLAB and Python, that is, how to call Python code directly from MATLAB. Over here, we defined two matrices, A1 and A2, and we defined an additional parameter. We will use this function to call this Python code called test.py, and we will send to this code these two matrices, A1, A2, and the parameter. The Python code is given over here. This Python code will perform basic matrix operations on the matrices that are provided by MATLAB, and these matrices are A and B. We will add these two matrices, we will multiply these two matrices, and we will also invert the matrix A. After these operations are completed, we return the result as a list back to MATLAB. And later on over here, we convert the results sent by Python to MATLAB objects and we display these results in MATLAB. Before I start, I would like to mention the following. First of all, those of you who are my subscribers or who follow my work know by now that I always create a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. And consequently, here is the post. This post contains all the explanations as well as MATLAB and Python codes. A link to this post is given in the description below. Secondly, it took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this video and the post. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start. The approach presented in this tutorial requires a MATLAB version of at least R2021B or higher. Then, not every Python version is supported by every MATLAB version. So first of all, you need to check your MATLAB version. After that, you need to follow this link, the link provided over here, that will lead you to this MATLAB page. And on this MATLAB page, you can check the compatibility of your MATLAB version with Python versions. For example, over here I can see that my MATLAB version R2020B is compatible with 3.7, 3.8 and 3.9 Python versions. For example, even if you have a Python version of 3.11, that does not mean that you can use this version with MATLAB R2021B. You need to make sure that you have the proper version of Python. In my case, the following happened. I had the version 3.11 and I could not use it with MATLAB. Consequently, I had to install an additional version of Python and that was version 3.9. And there were no issues. I could run Python 3.11 and I can use Python 3.9 from MATLAB. 
After you install the proper version of Python, you need to link this version to MATLAB. And you can do that in MATLAB by executing this code line. This function, PyEnvironment, takes as the first argument the string version, and you should not change the string. The second argument is again a string that defines the path to your Python file. And you need to find this path. So let me show you how to find that path. Over here, if you click on start, you can type Python. And here, over here, you can see that I have several versions of Python. So I need to click over here on Python 3.9. I do the right click, I open file location, and here's the shortcut. Again, I do the right click, and I click on properties. And here is my path. Here's the target. So you can see the path is given over here. You copy this pack, path, you go back to your MATLAB and you simply paste the string over here. So here's my path. I will not execute this code line since it will return an error since I already linked my Python with MATLAB and you need to do it only once. That is, if you close your MATLAB and if you run MATLAB again, you don't need to execute this code line, otherwise it will return an error. And over here you can see the version of Python, it's properly linked, it's version 3.9. Of course you can also access the version by executing this code line. The next thing you need to do is to install Python libraries in your Python environment. Here is the code I developed. In this code, I'm using NumPy library and I'm using SciPy library. Consequently, I have to install these libraries in my Python environment before I can use them. So let's see how to do that. You press the start button and you open the command prompt. You can find the command prompt by typing cmd. Here is the command prompt. Now, I need to change my current folder. I need to go to the folder where my Python version and the correct Python version, you have to keep that in mind, is installed. So I will type these commands and then I will type cd, change the directory, command and here is a path to my Python folder and if I type something like this I can find my file so here is the file I need to execute this file to initiate my Python environment and notice here the message the current Python environment is Python 3.9.0 then I need to install the libraries. Basically I need to exec execute these code lines. So I will copy and paste them over here. Then I need something like this. And this command will actually install NumPy. You can see the result that NumPy is already installed, however in your case this will not happen, Python will install NumPy. Then you need to install SciPy library, you can do that by executing this command and again since I previously installed these two libraries I get this message. Now we are ready to go. First we need to define matrices and parameters that will be passed to our Python code. The matrices are called A1 and A2 and let's define them. Then we need to convert these matrices to NumPy arrays. That is, we need to convert them to Python objects that Python can understand. Consequently, we execute these two code lines. And let's see the result. So if we type A1 converted, we can see that A1 converted is actually a Python array. Similarly, A2 is also a Python array. 
Next, I need to specify another parameter that will be sent to the Python code. This will be a simple integer that will be equal to 2. So I will execute this code line. And let's see the result. And you can see over here that parameter is an integer. This is how we call Python scripts from MATLAB. For that purpose, we use this function called PyRun file. The first argument of this function is the name of the Python script. In our case, the name is test.py. The second argument is the name of the variable that will be returned by this function. And we store this variable in another MATLAB variable called result. The last three arguments in our case are the variables that we pass to this function. They are a, b, and parameter 1. a is equal to a1 converted, the previously defined Python object, b is equal to a2 converted, and parameter 1 is equal to parameter. Here it's very important to emphasize the following. a, b, and parameter 1 called param1 as well as this return list are the names that should match the names of variables in this Python script and that's very important so this Python script needs to contain a b and param1 as well as return list as variables OK, so let's see our Python script called test.py. Here it is. What do I do over here? First of all, I import the necessary libraries. These libraries are previously installed. Then, remember one thing what I said. A, B, and parameter 1 are variables that are sent from MATLAB to the script. Consequently, I don't define them over here before my first command line. That is, they're provided by MATLAB. So what do I do over here? I perform basic matrix operations on A and B. Here I add A and B. Here I multiply A and B. Here I define an identity matrix whose dimension is equal to param1. And over here I invert my matrix A. Next, I need to define another variable, or better to say a list, that will store C1, C2, C3, and C4. And this list, called return list, will be returned back to MATLAB. So going back to my MATLAB code, let us summarize everything again. This function, pyrunfile, calls this script test.py, that is this script over here, it provides as input arguments a, b, and parameter 1, called param1. The values are specified here. And it returns this list, that is, the list defined over here. And it stores this list in this variable called result. OK, so let's execute this function and let's see the result. The results are stored in this list called result. Let's investigate this list. OK, basically it's a Python object. And let's check the data type of the return variables. I can simply type class of result and I can see that it's a Python list. Let's access the elements of the return list. I can simply type something like this to obtain my matrix C1. The C1 is defined over here. Then if I want, for example, to access the last entry, I can type something like this. So this should correspond to C4. Okay. However, if we want to use 
the return results that is we want to use the elements of the return list called result we need to convert python objects to matlab objects for that purpose we can simply use this function that double that is we can cast the result as a double so let's do that and now we can see that the matrices C1, C2, C3, and C4 are actually MATLAB objects. They're matrices. And let us perform these operations in MATLAB in order to check the results. So C1 is A1 plus A2, C2 is A1 multiplying A2, C3 is an identity matrix, and C4 is an inverse of a1. So let's do that and let's see the result. So this is C1 check and this is C1 returned by Python. This is C2 check in MATLAB and this is C2 returned by Python. And we can see that the results are identical. This means that we have correctly sent the data, Python performed some operations, stored the results in this list over here we retrieve that list over here stored as the results and we cast the result as matrices okay that would be all for today i hope that you like this video if you like the videos i create please subscribe like and support my channel thank you very much and have a nice day